still good morning. Um, it's been, I hope you've had a nice coffee break, but um, it's been commented that looking at the audience um, today is looking like the progression of Jesper's hairline <laughs> over the years preceding. <laughs> um, all patch in the middle here. <laughs> Okay, um, Jakob and I have the pleasure of um, introducing this next session and um, as that uh, person who wouldn't stop talking in, during the film has uh, mentioned, we're looking at biodiversity from different ways and the title of the session is From Micro to Ecosystem Scale, Do We Know Enough to Make Decisions? This is a nice continuation from uh, the previous session on bridging science and policy. As we've just heard, I keep banging on about this, what is marine biodiversity? Well, it really does depend what you want. It's life of the universe and everything in the seas. And when we're trying to analyze it, um, it might be number 42. Uh, there is no single conceptual model that makes sense because as you've just heard, you know, we're looking at uh, biodiversity from different perspectives and what you want to focus on depends on what you're interested in. Um, this uh, this um, uh, study has actually arisen from many years of discussions and misunderstandings and um, right I'd like to acknowledge the Biomara project of which two persons are in the audience, Herman and Ricardo from the uh, 1999 I think, uh, the Marbeck community and also actually um, in uh, Biomare, um, we'd like to acknowledge Carlo Hype, the late Carlo Hype, and Richard Warwick, uh, the Marbeth community. Of course, many, many here are Marbeth friends, and of course, the uh, Task Group One of the Marine, uh, the MSFD, and of course, the Goats. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might find you get what you need. <laughs> this is quite crucial because we want to measure and monitor everything everywhere, but we can't. But we need to find out what do we need, what do we need, what do we need for MSFD and national and international purposes. If we're looking at the structural aspect, it's kind of a who's who of the biological world. And most of the marine assessments focus on a very small part of this tree of life. And one progress that uh, Devolts has done is put bacteria on the map. Uh, up to now, I don't think I've seen a single official monitoring program that includes bacteria. This is a good advance of um, uh, Devolts. So who's going to use this? Well, inventories and people um, red lists national and international, uh, numbers of species and who um, counts and abundance, they are used as indicators of, for example, seafloor disturbance and looking at change over time uh, due to either human impacts or climate. And as Mike's very fond of these horrendograms, uh, our conceptual understanding has to be a simplification of something that's immensely complex, but our brains, as Chris Lynham keeps saying, our brains can't cope with this amount of complexity. If we're looking at functional ecosystem biodiversity, this is, you might say, what descriptions of the organisms, who's doing what. Um, management uses, um, I'm afraid. That's a copy and paste error. <laughs> so you would look, you look at um, just uh, for um, health, health of your waters. Um, we might say we've been arguing about structure and functions. Uh, well, if we say that um, functions are the sum of the processes which drive the um, functions, we, we might think of three main functions, primary production, secondary production, and nutrient cycling. And there's a whole range of processes behind these. And here I'd like to, and a bunch of people here are involved in um, uh, a, a publication which is coming out in Frontiers soon. And thank you for the um, second 
second prize for entertaining nighttime literature. Story of my life, I was in the bathroom at the time. <laughs> Food webs. Um, well, you can't really get more out than you put in. So food webs, you might say at the base, is the uh, sum plus um, uh, <clears throat> primary production gives you what you might call your food web. Um, so it's about em energy flow, and like I say, you can't produce more than your photosynthesized biomass will support. Typical management uses, fisheries management, stock assessments, and uh, systems understanding. It's very much um, on, a, on a par with ecosystem understanding. And then you get to, well, biodiversity. Should it be increased? Is more biodiversity better? Why is it might it be better? Why is one kind of managed biodiversity, should it be better? Or is unmanaged biodiversity better? Um, well, again, it depends what you want. And you can discuss um, diversity. Is a high diversity a stable system? Is a lot of animals doing the same thing? Does that make it uh, more resilient to change? Well, again, all these things, our assessments need to be context. It's all about the scales, about the scales, no trouble. It's all about the scales, about the scales, no trouble. It's all about the scales. It's very true. I agree. Our indicators and our understanding, it's a, there's a scale to organisms. Everything from a, uh, genes to ecosystems. We have a um, scale in terms of space and we have scale in terms of time. The CBD definition of biodiversity is from genes, population, species, ecosystems. And the NSFD requires all of these to be addressed and DeVolts has provided new <coughs> indicators to do this. In space, monitoring is carried out at local scales but the MSFD needs upscaled assessments at the level of subregions, to regional seats, to pan-European and even global implications for global research. And at time, scales of time, indicators are acting at different time scales. Everything from bacteria who will offer change or exhibit change within minutes, hours or days. Benthos, months, years, birds, annually. It's huge um, amount of complexity and we're working very hard to try and understand and select out the relevant parts. And I would like to... Yeah, so I'll take over with uh, one of my favorite TV series from the 90s. It's The X-Files. And The X-Files that we're using this catch. The truth is out there. You probably, those of you who watched it know this. I had to say, being a statistician, I had to be a little bit more pragmatic. So in most cases, we had to make inference from a subsample or sample of it. So we had to think about that we do not have perfect knowledge. We can only make some kind of, you could say, assessments on what is the truth. One of the chances we had in, in the votes was actually also looking at it from uh, a top-down uh, perspective. I think if you look at you know what scientists have contributed so far to the implementation of various directives, including the Water Framework Directive and also uh, the MSFD, is that a lot of things have been focused about developing uh, the biodiversity indicators. So going up from, from bottom-up approach, not really considering how does that actually uh, go together in, in, in the large big picture. But we try to uh, accommodate that in the vote by looking from the top down, thinking about if we want to assess biodiversity and other descriptors at a large scale, what kind of information do we need then? And then try to track that down all the way down to the biodiversity indicators. So, and this we put together in the program or the tool called NEAT, and that was introduced uh, Monday. So I'm not going to go into too many details about it, but it's already now available and it can be downloaded as this address here. Just quickly, um, it, it's all based on the indicator, indicator information. You need to enter some information about you say how to scale it to uh, a common scale, and you need information about its value, and as well as its uncertainty, given by the standard error. And the point of need is not that it's just, uh, it does calculations on uh, indicator values, it's actually aggregating indicator distributions, and I think that's a novelty of what we have been working with uh, in the votes. 
So we can also assess um, the confidence of uh, our decisions. And this has repercussions for how we're going to use it, because there are implications of whether we achieve good or not good status. So that's why um, we can be considered to be a, a decision support too. I'll round it up with this uh, slide here, because essentially whatever we do, we never get the full picture. You know, we just we have fragmented information. We just have small pieces of the puzzle, and we have to try to put that together in the best manner. And as we discussed Monday, and I think it was Mark from ISIS who commented that you know, essentially the future will tell us that we've never made the right decision, but the point is that we should try to make the best decision at the given time, given the information that we have available at present. So with this, I think we should move on to the Pecha Kucha. No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so actually, uh, the first percent, oh, you, that's, that's also close, I mean. So uh, the first Pecha Kucha will be about an uh, invasive species, maybe a keystone species to come into uh, marine management. It's the so-called Dapsi worm. 